Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to show you five easy tips to becoming an effect ninja in Premiere Pro. So to begin this tutorial, I've got a couple just example clips on the timeline, kind of tried to go ninja themed, and I'm working in the effects panel on the right hand side. This is where you can find all of the built-in effects in Premiere Pro. If you don't see this, you can always go to Window. I'm using the default workspace, so you can reset to save layout, or you can always open the effects panel in the Windows menu. So the first step to mastering all of these is understanding what you have in front of you and what all these different tools do. Now there's a few different folders. You have your presets, which I'll talk about in a later tip. You have your audio effects, video effects, and a specific transition folder. Now the difference between effects and transitions is that effects apply onto clips, whereas transitions apply in between clips. And one good example I can give you of that is there is both a gradient wipe effect and there's a gradient wipe transition. So that can be kind of confusing, but you see this applies onto the clip and this applies in between the clips. So just keep that in mind. You can see the symbol here is different. So a great resource that I can point you guys to if you're ever wondering what all of these effects do and when you put them in the effects control panel, what every single one of these different parameters might do is the Adobe Help website. It's got a great search feature and I'll leave a link to you guys to this page where it literally tries to break down every single effect if you're confused about what it does and what each different setting of all the different effects do. Now to get into the five tips, let's start with tip number one, which is where you can actually place effects. So like I was saying earlier, you can place effects right onto video clips and you can tell there's an effect on it because the FX turns purple instead of gray. Now if you have the clip highlighted and you look in the effects control panel, you'll see everything that's on the clip. So by default, there's always going to be the motion, position, opacity, and all those. But you can also see I added a directional blur. And under every effect, you should have masking options. So if you wanted it to only appear in a certain area and also effect controls. So for directional blur, we can adjust the blur length and we can also adjust the blur direction. Now, if you wanted to turn effects on and off, you can always click this FX button to preview what they look like on and off. But the cool thing is you can also place effects onto adjustment layers. So if I highlight my project media bin, and I go to File, New, Adjustment Layer, you'll see a blank adjustment layer pop up, and I can click and drag this onto a track above my clips, and I can do the same thing. I can apply effects onto adjustment layers. Now, sometimes some effects work a little bit differently, whether you're applying them directly on a clip or on an adjustment layer, but for something like blurs and directional blurs, this allows me to apply the same blur and drag it across as many clips as I want without having to apply that same effect onto each individual clip. So keep in mind tip number one, you can place effects right onto clips or on other media like adjustment layers. Now that goes into the next tip that I have and that's the fact that you can stack effects on top of each other. So let's say I wanted to have a directional blur and I also wanted to add another effect like echo. I can click and drag and that'll place both of the effects on the same clip on top of each other. And you can continue stacking as many as you want. Do keep in mind that if you're trying to stack a bunch of stuff on top of each other, you might experience a little bit of lag. The next tip that goes along with stacking effects is the order of effects. And this is actually very important. See right now I've got a blur and then an echo and then a turbulent displace. And that is the order that Premiere Pro actually applies them on top of each other. But if I was to move the directional blur to be last, then you'll see we get a totally different result because then it's applying the echo first and then the displace and then the blur. So order is important and you build the effects that you want first and the effects that you want last in that order. The next tip that's crucial to making almost any effect work or look good is if we go into the effects control panel, you'll see that there's a little stopwatch icon next to nearly almost everything. And that is the toggle animation or keyframes option. So when I play this clip back right now, it looks kind of cool. We got a cool displacement and echo going on. However, there's no animation or motion going in the displacement. 
See, in reality, for most clips, you'd want to animate them in some way if you're making an effect. So let's say I want to do a slight ripple. I can click the stopwatch icon. That'll add a keyframe at your current timeline marker position. So I'll actually move that to the beginning of the clip. And then I'll move to the end of the clip and I'll make it change in amount. So I'll make it go from a little amount to a lot of distortion. And when I play that back, you'll see it slowly ripples those trees, almost kind of like an underwater effect. So keyframes are super important. Literally, the possibilities are endless when you start combining keyframes, stacking, adjustment layers, and all that. And I have a tutorial over the basics of what keyframes are if you're still not familiar. So I'll try to link you to that. Now, we've applied all these effects to this one clip, but the next clips, we don't want to have to do all that over again. Like, what if we did a bunch of intricate adjustments and settings and we just wanted to apply it over everything well one you could go back to the earlier tip that i gave you and you could work with an adjustment layer you could apply all the effects onto the adjustment layer and stretch that over as long as you need you can always select different effects so i can actually hold command and highlight all of these effects and right click and copy and actually paste them onto different clips so that's another way you can do it i can just paste it onto the next clip you still might have to adjust keyframes if the clips are different lengths, so keep that in mind. Or three, you can create presets. So you can select all of the video effects or just one of them or some of them and right click and save it as a preset. And you can name it whatever you want and tell it what type of keyframe positioning you're gonna use. So scale will stretch the keyframe spacing across however long the clip is or you can make it stick to the in point or out point when the first keyframe comes in or last keyframe exits. And you can add a description and title if you want. So we'll do echo warp, I'll call that, press okay. And now if you go to your presets folder, you'll see all of the presets that you've saved. So here I have echo warp, like I saved it, and I can go and add that and drag it onto any clip. And each individual effect is still adjustable, but you'll see in parentheses the name of the preset that they came from. Check out my entire Premiere Pro playlist in the end card of this video, and you can see tons of different tutorials where I break down specific effects like strobe lights or color effects and show you guys how to build them step by step because there are dozens of effects here, and it does just take a little bit of time and practice to understand the function and the purpose of all of these different effects. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it below. Let me know what you thought in the comments and go follow me on social media at Justin Odisho if you want to reach out to me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.